Hello friends, today let's talk a little bit about chassis rigidity. So this is the stock bar that comes on the 46 m 3 on the later years. Um, this thing's got some uh, interesting design. So you can actually slide this back and forth as you loosen this up. So that's good, so you can adjust it. It's got these protrusions, which pressure on the shock tower. And a lot of people actually crack these at these ends on the track. This is a rogue engineering bar. It is uh, thin and flat. It's got a little bit of a spin here, which means that it's not just going to keep the shock towers solid from side to side. It's also going to try to prevent some of the twisting, right? So the design is very different. The cool thing that um, I checked is that if I wanted to do a spark plug change or a compression test, the way that this is spaced is actually really nice that you don't have to remove the bar because the nice thing about the stock bar is you can just remove these uh, four thirteens and remove the centerpiece without actually touching the shock tower ends and it opens up this whole middle while the Rogue Engineering one and I think similarly on the Mason one, and I think Rogue sources it from Mason or Mason sources it from Rogue, it's actually the same bar if you're buying the steel one. But anyway, um, this whole thing has to come apart all together. So a much better piece, it is uh, uh, much heavier, it's about twice as heavy, I think the stock one is about three pounds total. Um, this is in steel and I'll explain in a second why I got steel and not aluminum, this thing is about five to six pounds. But there's something called the coefficient of thermal expansion. Right, and aluminum expands a lot more, and given this is the engine bay, things get pretty hot in here. So what that means is when you mount the aluminum bar here, the aluminum version of it, um, you know, running on track, you would actually have some expansion in aluminum, so the towers would actually flex a little bit. Uh, the steel one has a much higher resistance to thermal expansion. The penalty, quote unquote penalty for that is, is the weight, but uh, that's okay. Carbon fiber actually has the lowest uh, coefficient of thermal expansion. Uh, the other note I want to make for you guys is that if you might be very tempted by going on eBay and finding a bar for like 50 or 100 bucks that says, you know, racing something rather, and it would have um, like hinges or pivots here, right, to make it easy to bolt and unbolt, right, so or heim joints or anything like that. Because we're talking about chassis rigidity, which means that we want to keep this strut tower connected to that strut tower and not move or flex at all. Anything that has any kind of joint that pivots, we don't want, right? So like by design, those things are actually not accomplishing what you want them to. I mean, maybe if you care about bling, that's fine. But if there's any kind of pivoting in them or hinges or heim joints, like I said, that's absolutely not what you want. So just be mindful of that. That's uh, just a quick, uh, quick review of the strut bar.